because we're right at eight o'clock. Good morning, everyone. How is everybody this morning? I uh, wanted to put up on screen real quick again the upcoming gathering, city gathering. Here we go. Two days before Thanksgiving. And I wanted to make sure that you know, everyone knows about it. Everybody uh, is invited to it. It's open to the public, free, family friendly. Um, <clears throat> parking downtown is free on Tuesdays from five until 2 a.m. or something. And um, it's gonna be beautiful mm -hmm. and uh, more than, well, it's gonna be meaningful. Uh, I invite you to consider bringing a, a bag of groceries, canned goods, uh, because part of what we'll be doing at four o'clock to seven o'clock um, is a food drive. This is all in partnership with the food bank and they'll have uh, one of their trucks there to load food on. Um, <laughs> We've got one congregation, I think it's St. Lucas Catholic. They are doing a drive for it and they're working towards 2,023 pounds, 2,023 uh, of canned goods to bring. So we've kind of got, you know, a ton coming. <laughs> and uh, another thing that's happening <laughs> at four o'clock is that there's going to be a can I don't know if you're familiar with can construction, but it's where, um, Largely architects, but not solely, but this is going to be architects. They build something out of canned goods. And so they'll be on the plaza building and creating. There's going to be free cocoa and uh, popcorn at the kiosk. But starting at about 5.30, 5.40, it says 6 here, but we're going to actually start before that. Um, Raindrop Ensemble is going to be with us. And they're going to be playing um, him, um, songs of faith and religion from around the world, but mostly from within the Eastern traditions. In between their songs, there will be families step up from different uh, faith traditions and sharing their simple <laughs> table prayers when they sit down to meal. And um, so that's gonna be quite lovely. At about 20 <laughs> till the hour, here um we're also going to have native american healing drum and if any of you came to the covid memorial um the, the same um leader will be there to do that drumming and uh, that will last until about till mm -hmm. seven ish but at the same time in the cathedral the san antonio youth chorale will begin singing as well so we're going to walk from Healing Drum into the cathedral to Young People Voices. <laughs> so, um, and then from seven to eight, this has been happening uh, for quite some time. I would guess two dozen, 30 years, something like from seven to eight, there's going to be a multi-faith time of prayer and gratitude for the, on this national holiday. So Thanksgiving doesn't belong to any religious tradition. Um, it's a, a national holiday, so it's a good time. Again, to repeat, there is free parking downtown on Tuesdays starting at five o'clock. There is a city parking garage <laughs> right across the street on Commerce uh, in City Tower, what was formerly Frost Bank. So if you park there uh, in any city lot, um, the parking is free on um, mm. Tuesdays. 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. I guess they want us to party downtown. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put this up here again. It's a week from this coming Tuesday, and you can come for any of it or part of it, and would love to see you there. Um, I think we have time for maybe one more announcement, or people can put announcements, of course, into um, the chat. Do we have any announcements out there? Raising of hands. It's good to see all of you this morning. Yeah, I have an announcement, Ann. <laughs> um, I should have known Sammy would come up with that. Come <laughs> exactly. on, Sam. Always got something going on, right? Yeah, you yeah, do. Have, yeah, yeah, we do have our no moss. I'll go to put it in the uh, chat here in a minute. We have a no moss uh, 48th uh, annual virtual convention being held here in San Antonio. It'll be obviously virtually, but 
I've already sent out over 300 invitations. Uh, no Moss is an international uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, they're the National Organization of Men Against Sexism. And they're gonna be coming here and talking on many different subjects that affect uh, men, that affect, uh, that, that are causes of, you know, all the social issues that we're having with domestic violence and uh, anger management and sexual assault, and human trafficking. Uh, the organization feels that, you know, what they want to express is kind of like their foundational uh, message is that, you know, there's a patriarchy that comes to just being a man and there's certain entitlements and privileges uh, that men believe that they have and, it's, and that this goes across all levels and all boards and all barriers when it comes to ethnicities and religions and everything else. And then um, me and Patricia have been, been dealing with these guys now for almost a couple of years and they just have a message that I know I never heard myself and I think Patricia would probably agree herself as well and I think it's a message that really needs to be heard that's going to give us us people that in San Antonio uh, uh, maybe a different way of looking through what everything that's going on and hopefully it'll be helpful in, in helping us come together and come up with uh, maybe even uh, broader ideas to try to put an end to everything that's going on here in San Antonio. But I'll go ahead and put that on here in a minute. But thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Sam. Um, that's also on November 21st during the day. So if you still have we have energy and time, it would be great to have you join in the evening. So I want to, some of you already know Poonam um, by her face, but also from uh, the video from Compassionate USA. She's in the very first video about uh, awareness, be aware. And um and I put that link in the notification yesterday. It's about a seven minute video about self-regulation um, and awareness. But the uh, other night, uh, Poonam and I were at a meeting together and afterwards we ended up having a parking lot conversation. I bet none of you have ever had a parking lot conversation, but we had a parking lot conversation and there was some information that she shared with me um, and it's obvious that I need to hear it again. I want to hear it again. I'm not able to describe it well. And so, uh, you know, I invited her just because I wanted to see Pam again, but I wanted her to share this information. And, um, and you read in the notice too, I, I'm looking at doing a series on healing. We've not done anything like this before, or I haven't in, in this particular setting. Um, but after last week's gathering on how to have a conversation, it seemed to kind of naturally lead, lead into, you know, how we heal. Um, and then also what do our different faith traditions, the wisdom over the years, how do they inform us as well? The one thing that we have in common between all the world religions is the golden rule, the ethic of reciprocity, that great wisdom of treating others the way we wish to be treated, and also not to treat others in ways that we don't like to be treated. And um, so I, I know that there's some wisdom that we can glean from each other, um, and that we could be a stronger community, even if we just understand or come to know about some of that wisdom. And um, so that's my hope. We'll see what happens. But I really thought what um, Poonam shared with me could be a really nice grounding point from where we were from last week and then moving into these uh, different uh, cultures and religions. So Poonam, do you remember, I hope, that part of our <laughs> conversation in the parking lot? <laughs> it was a long conversation, so I'll try to <laughs> pull forth maybe stuff that seems relevant to what you've shared today. Um, first, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm really happy to be here and to be with all of you this morning and uh, and enjoying the conversation so far. And uh, hopefully I can add something you know uh, helpful to that. Um, I think, and uh, as you and I were talking, I was probably, I, I say this a lot, you know, I'm just struggling with how the world is at this point and, and just thinking so much about how do we get people back on a track of being healthier, right? Um, because as a psychologist, I've been in practice 25 years and I've been living, you know, the fallout from COVID, the fallout from all sorts of things that are going on at a much higher level, right? Even all the changes in 
uh, accessibility of technology and just how that's transformed our culture. But one of the things that has become clear to me over the last few years is that what we're struggling with at this point is really just something very, very fundamental. Okay. And that is our sense of safety in the world. Okay. That is actually uh, feeling safe is actually our deepest need. It's our deepest need. And everything in terms of even how we're constructed physically uh, actually is centered around that. But the most important thing your brain does every day, your nervous system does, is scan for safety. And I was sharing with you, and I think that, um, you know, our, our, literally our nervous system scanning for safety four times a second. Four times a second, right? So even in this, the time I even said that, how many times did the scanning go on? And I think of it as a bit like having an alarm system in your house, you know, at night you activate it maybe while you're asleep and it's just scanning and making sure nothing is popping up. Uh, our nervous system is that way too. And there are three places that it scans uh, all the time. One is inside the body, right? So inside, so if I have muscle tension or my heart is racing or, or I have pain inside, or even like, you know, maybe I've been hungry for a few days, right? Or I'm, I'm running a fever perhaps, right? That's going to be, uh, that may potentially set off the alarm, okay? Uh, the other place, so one is inside. The other place that the system constantly scans is outside. So the outside environment. And as, as I say that, think about what the outside environment is like for all of us right now. Think about what's coming into our lives, you know, uh, uh, through the television, right? Through all sorts of media. Uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of violence around us, right? There are wars and conflicts going on. Where, uh, and you mentioned, I mean, you're at a meeting last night about gun violence, right? That's become routine. We're hearing about kids and locking down schools. And it's a lot of, um, if you look at the outside environment, it's actually, look at it objectively, it's a bit alarming. A bit alarming. Just the number of messages we get that it's not safe, it's not safe, it's not safe. Okay. And then the third place that, that the system is always scanning is in between, between you and I. So even in this meeting at some level, we're all kind of looking at each other's faces and on Zoom, it's a little harder to do. In person, you just kind of size somebody up really quick and say, is this person safe or not? Um, and we're looking for things like eye contact, you know, gentle eye contact, a smile, something uh, inviting you in. Uh, what we are scared of is judgment and someone rejecting us. I mean, these are, we're bonding mammals by design. We, we want to know that we can belong and it's safe. And so, uh, so this is going on all the time, right? This is the way our nervous system is designed. And actually one other thing we share with all human beings on the planet is the design of our nervous system. Okay. So uh, I see that the environment we're all in right now is fostering so much of a sense of not being safe, a sense of fear. And that is not a neutral thing for us. That literally makes us recoil. It makes us want to hide and, and protect ourselves. And so when we're in a state of fear, the problem with that, I mean, it's a huge problem. The problem with that is when we go into a state of self-protection, when the alarm goes off in our nervous system that things aren't safe, we actually don't engage. We're like a turtle. We just kind of retract under the shell, right? And and then you know, think about if there was a loud sound and you were a turtle and you retracted under the shell, and then the sound stopped. You wouldn't you wouldn't just pop back out and go, okay, it's over. You have to be lured back out. So when we take away threat, we take away threat that doesn't automatically then fix the problem. That's what we're running into. We literally have to cue safety. We have to let people know it's safe. We have to do that very actively. We have to do that very, very actively. And so when I look at the core needs of a human being, I mean, to me, the most fundamental ones are safety and then connection. The two are, you know, they feed each other. You know, our connections help us feel safer. And as we feel safer, we're more able to connect. The two are interlinked. And, and so 
It's very, very difficult in the in the current environment for people to really show up. And if you remember too, I mean, none of us are going to forget this, right? We just went through COVID, and I think it's just funny to me that after two or three years of chronic feelings of not being safe. Now we're supposed to go back to the way things were, right? We're just supposed to kind of move on. And it's to me, this is a bit like how we deal with other things that are emotionally difficult, like death, for example, like you got a couple of days off and now come on, you got to get back to work. And I think that strategy is not going to work because, because we're living beings and we just don't operate that way. So what I was saying to Anne is, I think there's a fundamental disconnect between how we're actually designed, how we actually function, and what is actually going on around us. And the bigger that gap is, the more of them we're seeing mental health issues popping up. We're not having like, it's not all of a sudden that everyone's mentally ill, right? We certainly have seen an increase in uh, reported rates of mental illness and diagnosis of mental health issues that we're cultivating that human being in a situation they're chronically unsafe you will foster anxiety you will foster uh, depression you foster suicidality you will foster all sorts of health issues as well um and uh, you know i'm saying to Anne, it's a bit like if you had a, if i had a plant that each one of your little seedling and i said hey will you take care of this right you would know that in order to take care of it, it's got to have water, it's got to have a little sunlight, it also needs to be protected if it's if it's not really strong yet. And you would, uh, you know, give it all its basic needs and you would trust that if you did that, it has an innate capacity to to get stronger and to grow. Well, we're the same way, except for the environment we're in right now is it's pretty toxic to human beings, right? And the problem is once we go into a state of fear, we also become disconnected and we become dangerous. I always say the most dangerous creature on the planet is a disconnected human being. So when we're disconnected, we're capable of doing horrific things, you know, and this is uh, unfortunately the world we're in right now, there's more and more of that disconnection. So to me, um, moving in the direction of trying to foster health always includes fostering connection that helps us feel this window um, because we are coming out of a very, very difficult time period and people are scared and there's a lot of uncertainty uh, out there, uh, financial uncertainty, uh, uncertainty about where are we, where's this, are we ever going to get back to something that feels more comfortable, more like how it used to be? Um, and in the middle of that, we have our children. And that that's actually the biggest reason I showed up today. I don't have kids. My, I have a 21 year old and almost 16 year old. Uh, but my goodness, I mean, I I'm a psychologist for a living and I feel like I have had to be so intentional in taking care of my kids. Right. And it's not been because they're that difficult. It's because the environment It's constantly, you know, trying to mold them and shape them and tell them how they don't measure, you know, and they're living beings. They need to be nurtured and cultivated, not molded and shaped and manufactured. And so, um, you know, I think that these kinds of meetings, these, you know, all these gatherings we're talking about, this is exactly what we need. We need to come together. But we also need to understand how human beings function so that we can line up with that and nurture it. Because I do believe that when we're feeling deeply safe and connected, we are actually by nature very compassionate. We're very compassionate. You look at little kids, I mean, they, you know, you see a little toddler and when another toddler cries, they cry too, right? They cry too. We never teach them that. They, they, they can see the feelings and they're moved by that. But in a world where we're disconnected and we're not looking in each other's eyes even very much anymore, how do we see the pain? How do we see? Because when we do really register it, that automatically will cause us to pull back and say, you know, I can't say these mean words. I'm hurting somebody. I can't shoot this person because they look terrified, right? I mean, like, so, uh, so and I'm getting into, uh, you know, the bigger uh, issues that I think about on a daily basis, but I, I think it's so important um, to, to understand the importance of the work that's being done even in, in these gatherings. Um, we are all, you know, working together to try to restore a sense of peace and safety. 
and and with that uh you know comes connection comes compassion and of course those things make the world better so we're all seeking at the end of the day right we're all seeking that so so i don't know if that was more what you were talking about Anne. um but that was the that was exactly it okay and now now i have it recorded so when i can't oh, quite remember yeah. i'm going to go back and review one of the questions we have in the chat mm -hmm. uh, from joy what is the fourth area that the brain scans regularly i didn't hear it separated out yeah it was so three it was three it was yeah. three okay yeah was inside outside between so inside inside me outside world and between you and me it's constant constant and why between you and me because we're i mean I mean, I, I know people, it's not popular in some circles to describe us as animals, but, you know, I'm a psychologist. We really are bonding mammals. And so, you know, what another person thinks of us, it means means something. Because they're often tied to our well-being. We can't live in isolation, right? And we have too much of that going on right now. We have a lot of uh, people are isolated and separated, and that's actually very, very harmful. Uh, I think the Surgeon General had even discussed that recently at some length. Uh, epidemic of isolation, loneliness in the United States. Yeah. And the interesting thing too, I think that you said was that precisely when we're, when we're kind of in that unsafe place, the thing that we need most mm -hmm. is the one thing that we don't want to do is connect with somebody else. We tend to, as you said, withdraw, but what's going to help us the most mm -hmm. is to connect. Yep. and and to take that step right mm -hmm. uh, i know that that happens to me you know that oh i'm i'm just going to stay home you know it's and part of that is you know tired or being overworked yeah. or whatever that might be but um knowing when you know you are kind of at your you know hurting the most to reach out to somebody or accept that invitation why don't you come along? You know? Yeah. And I think it's hard, Anne, because there's, because we have to ask for everything, right? I mean, if we're embedded, if you're embedded in a family, in a community, a lot of times you don't have to ask. Someone can see you're struggling. Hey, what's going on? Uh, you look a little off. And I think it is hard. You know, we're having to work so hard to get our basic needs met. And so I, I do think it's important to, you may not be able to connect with the larger community, but you still need to, I would say to my clients, like to kind of create a little bubble for yourself of people that are safe that you can turn to and you need to nurture those relationships and make sure they're deep, right? Because we have a lot of, you know, we go wide, we don't go deep. That's problematic. We're designed to go deep. And, uh, you know, but I think even in the world of work, we're expected to move around and just yeah, cut ties with communities that we've been part of. and. It makes it harder. It's just, once again, the environment, I think, doesn't always line up with how we're actually designed. And the further we get away from that, uh, the harder it is. Harder it is. Just so uh, one, Billy, they asked again, how do we get to the recording? Um, and so he's going to put that in there. Um, but David asked, with technology becoming more prevalent, Mm -hmm. you know, and people becoming more disconnected there, would you have any tips for people to be more connected with that with technology? technology? Uh -huh. Well, you know, I, uh, technology, you know, you hear this all the time. Technology is a tool, you know, you can use it. It's how you use it that matters. Well, uh, and that, that is true because we certainly, I mean, I, uh, I know when I use social media, often it's to, I, I love that I can connect with family across the country, right? People are scattered and I love being able to use technology to, to get together, right? Virtually even, um, but we do have to manage it properly. I mean, like, I think because we're not, we're carrying computers around, right? Now we're going to be carrying AI around with us everywhere. Right. And now, and now they're also going to develop you know, uh, friends for us in virtual space, so we don't have to interact with other human beings. That's what I hear things are going. So technology, I think we have to rein it in. It has to, you know, if we can use it as a tool, I think it's difficult though, because uh, now uh, everyone's using it. We're all kind of addicted to our phones and and uh, social media, and it's, it's challenging to uh, put the genie back in the bottle, so to speak. But I think for if you're working on this individually, I would really, I mean, I really do manage my phone. 
uh, it is off during the day when I am working so I can focus. I don't have the illusion that I can multitask. I don't. And um, so I think having some real rules around how you use it and, uh, and examining that, like, well, how am I using my phone? How am I, how much of the time am I using it to substitute for things I should be getting in person, right? We're doing a lot, most of us just scanning and scanning and reading. And But when we're doing that, what are we not doing? And I think especially for kids, we're seeing so many developmental issues because they're not interacting with real human beings. They're not moving and playing and getting out in the sun, you know, it's like a lot of this. So I don't know if that's helpful, but I think uh, just really examining how am I using this and and do I need to kind of set up some basic rules for how I engage this device that is actually designed to make me addicted to it? Mm -hmm. It's literally it's probably do. Are there any groups that you know of, you know, like AA or, <laughs> you know, but for technology? I mean, have we gotten to that kind of point? There are. They you are know, people like that. Yeah. There are programs for for tech addiction. They're whole programs. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. It's real. It's real. yeah. Well, thank you, Poonam, for coming today. Um, so just so you feel a part of a larger community, um, I, I don't know how many people will be willing to do this, but, you know, how many folks out there on this screen have said, you know, I want to help. I want to be a part. And they told me that. And now they found themselves, Billy, now they, now they found, find themselves every Thursday morning recording this. Anybody want to raise their hand to that? Has that happened to them and from, with me? But that's what, yeah, there we go. But that's what Poonam <laughs> said the other night at the end of that parking lot of conversation. You know, she was like, I really want to help. I, I want to be a part of this. And so I took her up on it. And here she is this morning, and I'm grateful that you have said yes and, and came. And this recording will, will help beyond our gathering today. So thank you for that. Um, it's 827, and um, I'll, I will stay on uh, for anybody who just wants to chat about anything, uh, catch up on maybe little threads that we're working at or something. But yeah. Um, I think our conversation is kind of closed. I hope again next week um, that we'll hear a, another session on healing, but from a, a faith, spiritual tradition to hear those kind of wisdom um, that we might share and, and even just know about each other. And, um, and that'll provide some connectivity as well. Um, please keep in mind that two weeks from today, if I have my calendar right in my head, is Thanksgiving Day. And it's the only Thursday we don't meet in a year. So uh, either you go, yahoo, or you're like, oh, darn, we're not meeting today. Um, and I can, I hope you, um, you know, enjoy that one, that morning off. Um, I think that's it for today. I look forward to seeing all of you next week. And again, you can see Dr. Poonam Sharma, on the Compassionate USA videos, the first one on being aware. And if you remember, she had, she gave me one of these the other night. She has, <laughs> she talks about this. Then you will remember Poonam, right? Yes, I, I so, have that too. <laughs> yeah. It's a club. It's a club. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks all. Uh, again, I'll stay on in case anybody needs to have last minute chats. Thanks everyone for coming. Have Thank great you. weekends and we'll see you next Thursday at the intersection. Thanks, Puna. Thanks. Hey, Anne. How do you yeah. how do you follow her or connect with her, and how do you get that little light? Oh, <laughs> first of all, I need oh, oh, Puna. Your yeah. answer to this is wow. Well, this I got on Amazon, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I do have a a website. It's called livingingreenproject.com. And where I'm really, it's really just focused on teaching people about this traffic light and, Wonderful. you know, how do we live in green? And so you can, uh, you know, connect there. It's how to live. How? Sorry. It's called living in green project.com. Living. Yeah. Living in green project.com. Uh, you can just, uh, 
Google my name, poonamsharma.com, and you can see all the things I do, my practice, and that particular, and actually stuff I've done with Anne in the past. Uh, we've done conferences together through Institute for Advancement of Mindful Living. So uh, yeah. if you want to connect with me, that's probably the easiest place. Just go to my name, poonamsharma.com. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's wonderful. Okay, great. You had some great comments in chat, Poonam, if you want to scroll there. Oh, okay. It's always nice to be affirmed. <laughs> uh, and it's important. Uh, thanks. Any other comments or thoughts about anything, actually, that we need to work on? I did see Don Larson in the chat about the pearl tell us a little more about that i know i know what it is but i want other people to yeah. know about the project well the the light the world project is a project the church has been doing for quite some time to bring connectedness in this time of the season right you get into the holiday season and there's opportunities that we all face and light the world is a way for us to kind of connect as people um, part of that is a giving machine, which is a, a unique way for communities to be able to um, share with local charities and maybe with global charities in a really simple, easy way with a swipe of a card. Um, and there's and so basically what it is, is these vending machines, they look like instead of dropping candy, they'll drop a charity so you can. We have five local charities in San Antonio that are participating in the giving machine this year. They're going to be hosted at the Pearl. Um, so they'll be there from November 20th through December 3rd. And the opportunity is to take your family out or friends out. You go enjoy a nice evening um, at Pearl and then have a chance to visit the giving machine and maybe donate to some local charities here or maybe some global charities that pique your interest and a very simple way to do it is you just swipe and there's there's um five dollar charities all the way up to like two hundred dollar charities and we have the food bank and and um uh interfaith um stuff in in the giving machine pauses in the giving machine so there's lots of lots of local charities that we can um, participate in it's a pretty cool um way to give back and to feel good and maybe to teach your children with a five dollar donation that it's good to give to charity so we invite you all out um we're hoping that we we have a launch event on the 21st um, we're going to do a soft opening on the 20th and then the 21st at 10 a.m we're going to have all the media out there and we'll do a big launch event and we invite everybody during that two week time frame, if you have a chance, 21st is very busy. So I get it. We got a lot of good stuff going on the 21st. And so I'll probably be down at the giving machine during the day and then I'll join you downtown uh, that evening. So, yay. I look forward to seeing you there, Don. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be it good. It will be good. It will be good. Um, others? What a great way to start this Thursday. Yeah, I finally cleared off the pumpkin off my front porch. Yeah. You know, you should clear those out pretty much, you know, like on All Saints Day or something. But anyway, that's how I started my morning. I was like, oh, yeah, got to get rid of that thing, right? So um, this was much better than the pumpkin. So I love all of you. Thanks for being here this morning. And um, I'll see you next Thursday, if not before. Thanks, Punas. It was perfect. And it was all yep, about me. So good. I got what I needed. So <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank and you. It was very good. Thank right. you so much. Thanks all. Bye.